Thanks for checking out Scotty's Hobbies. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to replace the front brake pads and rotors on a 2020 Chrysler Pacifica. This should be the same, if not very similar, to other makes and models. Those should be listed below. And if this video helps you out on your vehicle, make sure you comment below with the year, make, model, engine size, and the experience that you had with your vehicle, if it was easy or not. I don't want to waste too much of your time, so we're getting started on this video already. You can see I am turning the... Uh, steering wheel to the driver's side so it's a little bit easier to access the caliper to remove it so 13 here we go. millimeter i usually notate the size of the sockets i'm using to remove the component so i could tell you in the video but for some reason i didn't write down the caliper bracket bolt size but i will give you the best guess when we get there and also when i get the right size i will comment below uh, with that right size we'll put it in the description but in this case, to get the caliper itself off of the bracket, you're going to use a 13 millimeter, hopefully a six point socket to remove these two bolts. Remember when you're watching this video to take a, a look at my video library and you could find a video on how to do the proper brake job, which would be the proper lubrication and the torque specs and all that. We go over some of it in this video, but you could go a little bit more into detail when you do a really good brake job. So you can do the perfect BJ you can, right? So check out my video library. Again, 13 millimeter to remove the caliper. This was a 12 millimeter, maybe it was a 10 millimeter to remove your brake hose, a uh, little bracket right here so you could have some room to move the caliper around when you do get it off. I usually have a bowl or a tray laying on the floor so I can put all the bolts and everything in it so they don't roll away and it's easier to keep track of the bolts when you stay nice organized when you're doing your job. We're not gonna let the caliper just hang here or from the uh, brake hose, that's not good. Uh, you could cause damage that way or bend the hardened brake line and that'll cause it to kink and then your brakes don't work and you run into more problems. So make sure you use something to hold the brake caliper up. I use a bungee cord right here. I tied a little loop in the center of it so I can use it in different ways on multiple vehicles. It works out really good for me. You can see it right here. While you're in here, make sure you're taking a look around at everything, your steering components, your sway bar in links right there, your ball joints, the boots on your spring and your uh, shock right here. Make sure everything looks good. So if you do need to work on something else or something else needs attention, you could find it right here before it becomes too much of an issue. You can see your CV shaft boot right there. Before you take your pads off, you can, or, or there is ways to make sure that you need pads before you just jump in and do this. Uh, you could have more problems with your brakes, but right there is a really in easy indication. If you don't have that little notch in the center of your pad, then you know the, your pads are bad. That's a good wear indicator. But you also have a wear indicator on the back side of your outboard pad right there. That will rub on the rotor. When you press on the brake pads, you get that nice squeaky sound. and make, That is what causes that. So if you get that sound, that just means your wear indicator is squeaking and you probably need brakes. Here is your slider pin. I always lubricate these with synthetic brake lube, but for this video's sake, I'm only taking these off and replacing them so you know how to do it. If you watch my video, like I said before, for the best BJ you could do, it explains why and how you should lube these properly, but for video's sake, we're just gonna move on. Now we're gonna have to remove these two bolts that are holding the brake caliper bracket on. And here I'm using, I believe it's a 21 millimeter. Uh, but again, I don't know what I did with my notes. So I'm just, that's just off of memory. If you do this job or if I do it again, I'll correct it below. So make sure you look for uh, that information in the description and more information regarding stuff in this video, such as tools and parts. You can buy those as well. Remove these two bolts, set them off to the side. Make sure you don't lose them, damage them, anything like that. They are torqued about 125 foot-pounds, I believe. We'll, I'll give you the accurate number when we get there uh, at the end of the video. So they are kind of tight, but I do try to use hand tools that you have around uh, that you could get this job done too. You don't have to use the air tools like uh, the professionals do to get the job done. It's very simple to get this done. I should have reinstalled a lug nut on the rotor just to hold it in place, but it made it easy to disassemble this. So I would recommend you do that. And when I do the reassembly process, it, I do put one on. So you'll see what I'm talking about in just a moment. To get everything done, you will need a torque wrench, a 3 8 torque wrench I'm going to use on the caliper itself, and then a half-inch torque wrench on these caliper bracket bolts. Make sure your hardware looks good. In this case, it does. So again, we're just going to reassemble everything. 
but if I was to buy brake pads and rotors for this, I would make sure I find a pad kit that has the hardware kit included, or make sure you get that. Now, remove your rotor, take a look at everything, make sure your bearing right there looks good, your hub assembly is real easy to replace at this point. Just have to take that bolt off your CV shaft and pop off four bolts on the back side of your knuckle, and it pops right off. Put your new rotor on, or machined, or in this case, the same rotor. I'm gonna put one lug nut on. Tighten this down hand tight, and it's gonna hold the rotor flat. It's gonna make the reassembly process much easier. I should have left that on when I did the disassembly process, but hey, live and you learn, and hopefully you learned a little trick right there too. Hopefully this video is helping you out as well. If it does, make sure you comment below what the year make model engine size of the vehicle did help you on, how long it took, eh, your whole little uh, process you had to go through to get it done, if there was any snafus you ran into or whatnot. And if you have any questions, comment below too. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share and tell everybody about me that you know is taking care of their vehicle. When you start maintaining your own vehicle, that gives you just a, a whole different pride in your ride. So make sure you tell people about me. I love to help people get their job done. Now I'm installing my brake caliper bracket bolts on. For now, I'm just going to tighten these down snug tight, hand tight, not too tight. We're going to use a half inch torque wrench very shortly to tighten these ones down on a Chilton's or actually, sorry, it was a Haynes website. I found a source that says the 2013 and newer Chrysler Pacifica, the torque on the caliper bracket bolt should be 150 foot pounds and the 2012 and older should be around 125 foot pounds. So I torqued this one down to 150 foot pounds. If I get a confirmed torque spec and a bolt size, I will make sure I put that in the description below. So make sure you guys uh, stay tuned or let me know if you find something different too and a source that you found it at, please. Using my half inch torque wrench, 150 foot pounds. Most people like to go down to the first click. I usually do as well, uh, but given how tight this bolt is, I did make sure I did two clicks. If it was aluminum or when I go to the caliper, I'm just gonna go to the one click on my uh, torque wrench. If you need any of the tools or parts shown in the video, make sure you look for links in the description below uh, to purchase those. I'm working on getting my website set up so I could directly sell stuff to you. So hopefully that'll be there soon. So if it is, click away and look in the description. Getting going, grab your brake pad. Uh, your inboard or outboard pad might be a little bit different. So before you install it, make sure you take a look at everything. And hey, this is the same way it was when I took it off. That's one thing I like about recording everything is I always have it on video of what uh, how it was when I took it apart. So maybe you want to do that too. Every now and then take a picture with your phone or whatever device is around at the time. Might even go back to cameras, who really knows? Put the brake pads on, make sure everything moves freely. You don't want have to have any uh, re restrictions on the brake pads moving in and out. Same thing with the sliders when we get to there. You wanna make sure they move in and out of the bore really easy. If you had to compress your pistons back into your caliper, you're gonna use one of these two caliper piston compressors uh, we're going to go over two of them in just a moment, but before you press the piston back in your caliper, make sure you loosen the cap on your brake fluid reservoir. If you do not, you could cause a leak somewhere else. I have actually never seen that, but always safe than sorry. So you're going to compress the pistons right here. You're going to push the pistons back into the caliper, and that's going to force the fluid to go back up into the reservoir. If it has nowhere to expand to, if you have a really good seal on your uh, reservoir cap, it might blow a seal somewhere. So using this little basic compressor, you could compress one at a time. You could go back and forth and try to set up in the center, uh, but it, it works, but there's other ones that work even better. Um, in this video, I'm gonna show you this one. It's a basic one. You could probably pick it up for under $10. I'll probably be able to find them and sell them to you for, uh, hopefully, <coughs> an inflation. Who knows? It's 2021, so that's the price now. It might go up. Make sure you get both sides. It's hard to put the piston compressor right in the center because you have your little uh, bracket right there that gives the, the caliper strength. You can move this one back and forth and press each piston in one at a time. It gets the job done. And honestly, this is the one I usually go to. But there are other ones, such as this one. You put a brake pad on both sides or you could just leave the brake pads in the piston if you remove them or if they come out with your caliper. On this vehicle, they don't, others they will. So this one, the piston compressor goes between two pads and it pushes outwards. So it 
pushes the pistons in uh, simultaneously. This one works a lot more efficiently, or easier I should say. And if you have a dual piston uh, caliper set up where you have pistons on both sides, this is the one that you have to use. So you could do a lot more brake jobs with this brake caliper piston compressor. Uh, but links in the description if you need them. Either one works. Just get the job done. And like I said, when you take care of your own vehicle, you get the job done. Everything works just fine. You have a complete new pride in the vehicle that you're driving. It's, it's just a completely different vehicle. So if it's something that you could do, I recommend doing it. Simple as that, we're just going to install the caliper. I had a little bit of trouble getting this bottom bolt in, but just get your bolt in started finger tight first, a little bit with a socket if you'd like, but you really need to use your torque wrench to tighten these down, these ones down because they are a very, very uh, weak bolt, I guess you could say. It'll be really easy to strip out if you, if you go a little bit too tight. You also might need a crescent wrench or an open-end wrench to hold the actual slider from moving. Also, when you tighten this down, you want to make sure your caliper moves in and out, that your sliders don't have any restrictions in them. If they are, you're going to want to fix that right now before you go too far. Get these bolts tightened down finger tight. These ones are 13 millimeter six point socket or six point heads. So I would prefer to use a six point socket. I'm going to use a 3 8 torque wrench to tighten these ones down. On the same Haynes website, I found that the caliper should be tightened down to 26 foot pounds. Again, if that changes or if I find better information, I will update that in the description below. I really didn't need to use a crescent wrench in this case, but it's better safe than sorry. And for video's sake, this if you need to use it, this is how you're going to use it. Okay. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button while you're here. And let me know what you're working on. Comment below your make model engine size, how your job went, what's your next one. And check out my video library for a lot of videos covering this vehicle. Air filters, cabin air filters, PCV, a lot of stuff. Get everything torqued down properly. Again, that bolt on the rotor, a bolt, I keep calling it a bolt. That lug nut on the rotor is very, very helpful on your reassembly process. So you see how easy that went together? Everything went together a lot easier than uh, removing it when I got to the, the caliper bracket. Thanks for staying tuned for so long as well. Before you go too far on this brake job, don't forget to put the bracket back on your hose that was holding it up to your uh, shock right here. There's gotta be a torque value for this bolt, but I could not find one. I wouldn't go anything over say 13 to 15 pounds on this thing. It's a very, very weak, thin, small bolt. So be very, very careful with that one. Again, I will update uh, with any information below. Here is another way you could check and see if you need brake pads or rotors before you do the brake job. This right here is a brake pad gauge. It's a little plastic one, you can get metal ones. This one right here, I think it was less than, I think it was $9 from around there. I will have a link in the description below. This helps you on many vehicles. You can check it from through your caliper right there or on the side of the rotor. If you don't have these, you could also just take a little peep inside the caliper. You have little viewing holes right here. You could see your wear indicator on your pad is right there. That little U shape in the pad right in the center. When that is worn out or close to, you know you need to get new brake pads. Hopefully this video helped you out. I really appreciate you sticking around. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Thanks for checking out Scotty's Hobbies, and I'll see you on the next hopefully helpful video.